want you guys to never take a look at how to optimize Windows 11 to boost performance with no software. So if we take a look inside our task manager right here under the performance tab on CPU, you can see we have 207 processes running on this computer. Also under the thread section, we see we've got 3,330 and the handles is 95,517. And this is gonna fluctuate up and down so that process count is pretty high. So let's go ahead and take a look at the memory count right here as well. You can see on the committed part is 7.7, 33.2 gigabytes. Cached is 8.9 gigabytes. Available is 23.9. And you've got some other settings on here as well. So I'll show you screenshots of these at the end of the video so you'll be able to see exactly what the difference is. So let's go ahead now and we're going to go into the startup area. You can see there's quite a few bits I've already disabled here, but this is a common area where you want to start looking for heavy load of applications that are loading up and using a lot of system resources. I'll show you where to look for this as well and how to search properly for ones that are using high impact on the system. So let's go back to our start button here and go settings. Inside here, we're going to go to apps. Inside apps, we're going to go to down the bottom where it says startup. Once you're inside here, go to sort by name and change this to startup impact. This is going to give you the ones that are causing heavy impact on the system during this startup. You can see here we have ones that we don't need. The ones you do need, leave alone. But the ones you don't need all the time, you can toggle these off. These are taking up really precious resources. And you can see apps can be configured to start when you log in. And most of these cases, apps will start minimized or may only start a background task. So what I'm going to do here is toggle off the ones that are using a lot of impact on the system. So these are medium impact right here. I've done the uh, high impact ones and you can just toggle off the ones that you need. Obviously, you don't want to be touching your security suite. That is going to uh, take some resources, but you need that loading up. And again, some of the stuff you don't need, you can toggle these off. And this will help, uh, you know, reduce the system resources that are being used. So let me go ahead and go through here. And uh, once we've done this, we can close this off. And I'll quickly show you the startup area, because when you go there, it will show you uh, that they've all been disabled now. Apart from this G Hub, which is to do with Logitech software, which is to do with my headphones and mouse. So I'm going to leave that alone. And if we quickly take a look inside the startup area here, you'll see that these have all now been disabled. And the ones that have been enabled are listed on there and they have low impact on the system. So let's move on to the next step. Now, another key area to take a look at is the services. Now, a big problem I see on YouTube is a lot of people talk about services and telling you to disable things like print spooler and all this sort of stuff. If you don't have a printer, a lot of people don't understand what a lot of this stuff is. And unfortunately, if you start disabling a lot of stuff in here, that is running, you're probably going to end up making your system unstable. Now, some hardware and some software is going to need a service running. For instance, Bluetooth is another common one that people like to disable, but a lot of mice and headphones and things like that use uh, Bluetooth. So don't go disabling stuff because someone tells you on the internet. Use your common sense. Hyper-V and things like that, if you don't use virtual environments or VMware, and it's all listed in here, then you can probably safely disable this stuff or set it to manual. Things like BitLocker, if you're not using BitLocker, you can safely uh, disable this or set it to manual and stop the service if it's running by default, which it normally is. I've already gone ahead and done all of that. Any telemetry or any of that stuff, you can go ahead and disable all that. I've already gone ahead and done all of that on this system. Phone services, if you don't use a phone with your computer, then you can safely stop that service and disable it or set it to manual. It's entirely up to you. But again, use your common sense. The problem with services, one size does not fit all. Everyone's gonna want different services running because they have different needs. So this is where the problem lies when you make videos about disabling certain services. And this is when you'll start getting hate comments and things like that saying, you broke my PC because you told someone to say disable the print spooler and they have a printer now it doesn't work but things like a parent control and things like that if you don't have any kids and you don't use the parent control feature you can stop it and set it to manual and things like that so use a bit of common sense when it comes to things like these and go through and look at some of the stuff you have running in here that's taking up a lot of resources 
and I would generally disable it. Like sensors uh, service, if this is running and you don't use it, then obviously you can read the little information there and disable them and go through. Any sort of smart card or smart card devices or any of that stuff, if it's running as a service and you don't want it, then you can stop it and disable it. Storage sense and all that sort of stuff, if you don't use any of that service, you can generally turn this off. All of these windows back up, biometrics uh, service as well. If this is running, you can generally uh, deal with that and set that to manual as well. You can see Windows uh, Camera, Windows Defender Firewall. Goes without saying, you're not going to want to disable that because if you've got Windows Defender as your main antivirus, then you're not going to want to disable the, uh, the firewall or anything to do with Windows Defender. Windows Event Log or Event Collector or even Error Reporting Services and things like that, if you're not going to be using them and you don't want them and you want to turn them off, then you can do by stopping the service like I just showed you. But if you want to use it, then don't disable it. It's that simple. Same thing goes for Windows Insider Service. If you're in the Windows Insider program, then obviously you're not going to want to stop that service. Same thing for Windows Search. If you're using Windows Search, then don't stop it. It is a running service and it will take a lot of resources, but you can claw a bit back by stopping that service and not using the Windows Search. Another thing goes for also the security service or the subsystem for Linux or any of the other things that you're not using. You can stop these services if they are running. If they're not running, then you're not going to save any resources by stopping it. Xbox and all those sort of services, if they're running, you can stop them if you're not going to be using any of those. Same thing for any of the other services that you see listed in your services area. It is quite complex and it is very difficult to please everyone when you're saying just disable this and someone might need it like Hyper-V. If you are using Hyper-V, which is to do with your virtual environments, then yes, you don't really want to be doing that. Geolocation is basically your geolocation where you live. If you don't use the geolocation services, you can stop it. That's just like I showed you, set it to manual or disable completely. Gaming services right here. Again, I'm going to stop these. Uh, these are to do with this one right here, which is the uh, Microsoft gaming service. I don't want to be running that on my system. So I'm going to stop those because there's two of them there. So let me go ahead and stop those. And you can already see they have file history service there. If you don't use the file history service, you can set that to manual and stop the service if it's running. I'm not going to touch any ESET stuff because that's my antivirus program. I could safely stop the Windows Defender if I wanted to and take some resources back there because I already have ESET running on the system and I use an ESET firewall. I don't use Windows firewall. So I could safely disable those as well if I wanted to if I'm using uh, ESET as my firewall and antivirus. So again, just go through here and have a look. The ones that are running, status is running. These are the ones that are currently taking up system resources. Uh, again, this is Epson scanner service. I don't really use the scanner on my printer, but again, you might do. Yours might be a Lexmark or one of these other uh, printers that you have listed here, and it'll be listed all there. Macrum service, this is to do with Macrum uh, Reflex service, which is to do with backup software. If you do regular backups and it's, uh, you know, got it set to automatically backup, then obviously you don't want to stop that service. Now, there is a few here that I'm going to disable, which are these diagnostic ones here. So I'm going to quickly stop that service and we're going to be basically setting those to manual. And again, same thing for this one, diagnostic policy service. We can uh, disable this or set it to manual. I'm going to set it for manual now, and we'll see how that goes. The diagnostic execution service right there. There's another one right here as well. So have a good look. The Dell uh, Tech Hub, I'm just going to disable that because I don't use that service. So I'm going to quickly set this to manual or disable, and we can then click OK. The Dell Client Management uh, service here, I'm going to disable this as well. And you might be wondering how have I got Dell on here when I don't have a Dell PC. It's to do with my monitor and it's an Alienware uh, system. So that means the software that you might have installed on your system won't work because we've disabled it. So let's open up the registry editor. This is the very last quick tweak that we need to do here and then restart the PC. And I'll show you the difference between before and after. And we haven't had to download any software. So go to HKey Local Machine, go to System and go to current control set, open this up right here. 
and inside here go to control on the right hand pane we're looking for this one right here which is your svc host split uh, threshold here and that's common for a lot of these scripts that you see like chris tights text tool and all these other tools out there all they're doing really is editing this right here and setting a lot of services to manual and basically you can see we have gigabytes in memory right there and numbers that you need to uh, change these two so let's go ahead and change this to the 32 gigabyte value so i'm going to go ahead and do that right here and we're going to punch this number right in now this can make your system unstable if you use the wrong value so make sure you use the correct value for the amount of memory you have and again if you don't know what this is actually doing then you can do a search for svc host split uh, threshold into Google and there's plenty of articles out there explaining what it does. I can make a separate video explaining what this is actually doing. And again, it can, some people have said that their system becomes unstable when they do this. And some people have actually said it improves performance. And some people say that it doesn't improve performance. If you wanna make a separate video on that, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to explain what I believe and what I think. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go down and we've restarted the PC. And you can already see it's now dropped down to 97 processes right there. That's basically uh, half the amount of processes or near enough half the amount of processes. Now I'll do an end shot here so you can actually see the before and after of what it was like. And you'll be able to see the difference in uh, utilization on this system. And I'll show you some uh, before and after shots. Let's take a look at the before and after for the memory settings so in use there was 7.1 before and now we're using 3.2 also the committed just below that is 7.7 .7 before and now we've got 3.7 and you got the page pool and also uh, the other area right there which is the non-page pool they have both changed as well and they've both been lowered which makes it a lot better for uh, performance and you can see that on the graph as well, it's been lowered afterwards. That means we have more available memory and resources. So let's take a look at the CPU performance uh, tab and we'll go ahead and take a look at those. Again, you can see right there, the processes have gone down from 205 down to 97. Also, the utilization is not much change there, but there's a massive change on the processes and also the threads. On the threads, we have... Uh, 3329 on the before and after is now 2766 and on the handles it's a massive change from uh, 95,524 which was the before down to 49,600 so quite a massive change right there so all in all it has made a massive change to the system so if you've got a really old potato machine which is really old uh, then this might improve your performance by optimizing uh, these settings for your old computer anyway with that said let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk quick shout out to my youtube members i appreciate the support and i'll catch you in the next video or i'll catch you on the discord server bye for now